coming mm-hmm. in. Eventually, though, through his determination, how did he get noticed uh, and end up at Baylor in Division I? So I am a Minnesota Amateur Sports Commissioner and have been for a little bit. And so I sit on the board with people from various you know, backgrounds in sport. And one of them happened to be a person by the name of Al Nunes, who is a legacy here uh, in Minnesota and beyond in basketball. And so I just like, Al, I got this kid and I'm like, I'm a pretty good judge of talent, but you know, as a mom, you think, yeah, I may think my baby's so special and he's just the greatest. And <laughs> so, but, and so I, I didn't want that to be, you know, my, my, my thoughts right. being colored by me being his mother. So I asked Al to take a look at him and have a conversation. And so Al, I, I had sent him some footage of Freddie in D3. It was just a clip of where I think in the first like few minutes, he's he's dunked on a few people. He's, you know, blocked like three or four balls and, and, and the whole deal. And I sent him this clip and he's like, well, yeah, I'll meet with him. So he said, I had a conversation. He's like, nope, he's got it. He's like, and it was just amazing. He was able to assess. So he had a son at the time that was coaching at Baylor University. Oh. And so sent him this clip and he was like, and talked to coach Scott Drew, who's the head coach. He was like, Scott, you got to see this guy. So when Scott came to town to recruit Tyus Jones at the time, who's currently in the league, he stopped to say hello to Frederick. And we, the rest is history. It was like a whirlwind. Went down to Baylor. Baylor, Baylor is like, look, we can't give you a scholarship at this point because we've given all of those away. But if your mom and dad, my husband and I went down, if they'll support you for the first year as a walk-on, we'll give you an opportunity. Right. And so all I, I used to tell Fred this all the time. I said, you just got to have much mustard seed faith. So if you got mustard seed faith, Amen. you can do this. And what I told the coaches at the time, I said, you know what? I'm never going to say he's the most talented player because there's some talented guys in this team. But what I can guarantee is there's not a person in this gym that will ever outwork him. And of course, when I talked to Scott Drew and some of the coaches, they was like, yeah, that's what every parent says. Yeah. It was like, but you were really right. Because I, I went back, I said, I told you no one will ever outwork him. And um, he was 6'9 at the time with a seven, six foot wingspan. Oh, wow. wow. And, and um, the coach at Baylor, Scott, always said, he said, you always want to give a guy like that at least another look, right? <laughs> so so all of that, he went in as a walk-on. He was there. He had to sit out for a year. It was really a challenging time for him making that transition Yeah. Um, from a D3 program to a D1 program and particularly a um, Power 5 school, like a high major kind of program. Yep. Yep. So he didn't just go D1, he went D1. <laughs> and so that was yeah. quite the transition, quite the transition for him. And he went in the gym and didn't come out until he was better. And so- Absolutely. But what yeah. was it like for you to see him play for Baylor, a division one team and one of the best teams in the country? So, you know what? It was, it was awesome. It was awesome to me because as a mom, you want them to do what they've been called to do, what they've been purposed to do, what brings them joy. This was not ever my dream for Frederick. My dream is that do what you've been called to do, what's been planted in you. And so um, so we were just really happy to see that happen for him. But I was really just overwhelmed with gratefulness simply because I knew how hard he worked. That's right. I knew if he could have gotten a mattress and slept in that gym at Baylor, yep. he would have. And he did that all the time with being successful academically as well. So he did all kinds of academic honors on top of that. And I knew how hard it was for him, but he believed that this is what he was supposed to do. He looked at the television one day, honestly, Wendy, he was at Bay. I mean, he was at um, Carlton because I, I really wish he had gone to some other school. I love Carlton academically, but I knew that they would never meet this desire that he had for basketball. Yeah. yeah. Of course, he didn't listen to me, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> so, but he was with a friend at Carlton looking at a basketball game and he was listening to the announcers describe these players like, oh, they're six nine or six eight, and oh, they have this kind of wingspan, and they they're this and that. And he's like, I have all of those things. That's right. And he said he talked to his friend. He said, I'm supposed to be playing there, not those schools, but he said that's yeah. where I'm supposed to be playing. And so he just knew it. It, it clicked for him. And when he called me, he said, Mom, I can't stay here. He said, I have wow. to. I can't stay here. And I said, Okay. I said, I know you can't. And whatever we need to do to get you to where you're supposed to be, that's what we'll do. So and so he this saw is- it. Amen. So he, he saw did. it. He felt it. He knew. 
he knew. that I don't understand why I'm here and other players are where I should be at. I mean, you look at Baylor. I mean, their record at the time was 26 and four. They were said to be favored to possibly win the NCAA title before it was all canceled because of COVID. Yeah. Yeah. But that, yeah, that's not where they were when Fred got there. So that happened during his tenure there. So when he got there, um, at some point he told Scott Drew that they were going to win a championship. Okay. And so he could, he could feel that, like, right? Um, and he believed that they had a championship team. And so the, the first year that he started to play, uh, I mean, they did really well that first. You know, they did really well, right? And so, and then that pandemic hit. So he went from, you know, being a walk-on to then actually being eligible to play right. to not getting playing time and all of the stress that that brings, right? Mm -hmm. To the guy that started before him getting an injury. And then that injury is what opened the door to Fred to play. And we, you know, so he ended up playing. It's like, but what are you going to do with that? You, you know, you, your opportunity is here. Make the yeah. most of every opportunity. And so that's what he did. And, um, you know, started every game his senior year and it, they were having a phenomenal ride. They were number um, one in the nation for five for five weeks, mm -hmm. which was probably like one of the longest. They were the only team to have been number one for five weeks during that that year, which was, I guess, last year. And um, the, it was believed that they were going to go and win that national title. And then March came and everything to it came to a screeching halt. Yeah. So and it was heartbreaking. It was heartbreaking. For like so many years. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially for him where he just works so hard and he finally gets, you know what I mean, on this stride. And then all of a sudden, you know what I mean? It just stops for him again. Again. Yep. It was, it was, it, it, it just was one of those things. I'm like, okay, even I, cause I was literally headed to the big 12 conference uh, their playoff, you know, it's not that right. far. So I was going to drive down and I get this call and he's like, mom, have you left yet? And I'm like, yeah, I just got in my car. I'm on my way down. He's like, stop, turn around, don't come. I was like, why? He's like, it's not happening. And he said, I think they're going to cancel everything. And so it was so devastating for that entire team. It was so heartbreaking for them. And then when there's a mom, you, you're like, okay, I, I honestly was like, he's like, I'm going to call you back. So when I hung up with him, I was in tears. I was in tears for him because he had worked so hard and sacrificed so much and moved literally across the country to pursue something he believed he was, he's destined to do and call to do. And he had worked, worked like nobody else I had ever seen. He has an incredible work ethic. And then it didn't happen. Yeah. And there was and it probably never was going to happen because he was a senior and he was not definitely he was not considering staying beyond that. So to see his his senior year kind of in that way, um, it was it was really challenging. And so it was like, yeah, I'm not coming back. I mean, he had already he had earned his degree. He was like, I'm not coming back. And so to see that dream of winning that national championship just kind of slip away. And we knew it was never gonna happen for him. It was really challenging.